Okay, hello, greetings, and welcome everyone. Yeah, apologies for all the traffic noise. It's uh, a bit of a busy day today. I'll see if I can get onto a side street, it might be a bit quieter. So the, the question that came through, and it's, I get this question quite a lot, is can you do weight training with uh, internal arts like Tai Chi and, and Qi Kung and, and, uh, and so forth? And the answer is a big yes. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, some of the people who are very, very good at Tai Chi, they all do weights, they all do strength training. And ironically, they tell oh, many of them will say, don't do, do weights, but they train it themselves. Now, the, the benefits are, uh, uh, are, are many for doing weights. So let me go through them and some of the principles uh, you need to, to look at when you do weights. Now, the first benefit is people who do powerlifting type training uh, have extremely bright vital fields. Their vitality, their energetic um, uh, reservoir is very, very deep. So you have more energy to play with through uh, doing weight training. Now, <clears throat> some of the some of the the downfalls of weight training. If let's say you you do a heavy session and your muscles are aching. And in that healing and recovery process is a, a type of residual tension that sticks in the body. And this uh, residual tension is a, is a, you know, if you do your form and your shoulders are really aching from recovering, there's a type of uh, feeling of, oh man, I shouldn't do weights, I can't do my form very well. And this is the biggest hindrance. So you need to do a little bit more loosening uh, between... Um, uh, 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 rounds. You need to do a little bit more uh, work on on the uh, loosening after the training session and uh, through before you do your your Tai Chi form, for instance, you'd have to focus your your releasing on those areas that have that residual tension there. So this is pretty obvious for those of you who have gone through this process before. Now, the difference in the way you lift a weight is, is quite substantial. You're not trying to contract and tear the muscles the way uh, a bodybuilder would lift weight. What you're pretty much after is to connect your whole body. So let's say you're going to do a bicep curl. You grab the bar and you, you grip with your fingers and your toes simultaneously and you lower the weight of the bar onto your feet, onto your toes. And then when you press the ground with your toes, you lift the body weight up and, and stretch the legs and raise your stance slightly to take the stretch. And then you do the curl with your whole body. You're not isolating the bicep to do a bicep curl. You're doing a whole body exercise uh, instead. So this is, uh, uh, this is vastly, vastly different. And by, by lifting in this way, you'll find that um, you'll be connecting the fascia web of the body and uh, it'll be far less um, muscle soreness that'll happen. The, the soreness will tend to come around the joints. So the, the way the joints connect and the fascia activates, uh, the ache will be there, not in the muscle itself. So how you use this stretch to take the load. Now, if you look at it logically, when you're... Uh, uh, relaxing a muscle while you're holding a weight and you're letting your body stretch open to take that uh, load you're essentially transferring from muscle to fascia the elasticity of your body is taking the load where the muscle uh, uh, lets go so this transfer is very important now my preferred method for doing these types of exercises is encouraging people to to do cal calisthenic type training where you, balance is involved so let's say from right from the 80s when I first started teaching Kung Fu I'd get my students to do a handstand they would partner up so you'd throw your legs up in the handstand position your partner would catch your legs and then depending on your strength 
your partner would take a, a portion of your weight and lower you down in your stance and then, then help you rise in your stance. So you'd have this lowering and rising in your stance and with a supported person. After a few months, your partner doesn't need to uh, uh, lift your legs up and pull your body weight up. They're just helping you with balance. After a few more months, they're helping you less with balance and you're doing most of the work yourself. So this is uh, quite interesting because as you, as you train this, um, this uh, uh, balance and strength in the hands, doing handstand push-ups, you start walking around on your hands. So most people within a year are walking around on their hands. And this type of shoulder strength, because it's running through the balance of the body, the stabilizer is becoming active. It's a functional strength. It's not a, um, a muscle contraction uh, type of strength. It's an open, stretched, balanced strength. And uh, something like doing a dip and stretching your legs out in front of you, all these types of exercises that encourage you to uh, have whole body connection, this is where you're you're going to get a very, very high amount of benefit. So I really suggest when you're um, doing any type of strength training, if you move through the balance uh, doorway that you, you're building strength and balance together, you're automatically creating a framework for an, a higher level improved Tai Chi body. Always do loosening exercises between sets so that you can maintain a, a balance in your system. Uh, you'll find that um, as you start looking at the different types of options, you have kettlebells. So kettlebell swings are exceptionally good for connecting balance because as you swing the kettlebell out, it forces you to the edge of the balance and you have to stretch your body weight back, almost as if you're plucking the kettlebell to activate the fascia to remain strong in that stance. So kettlebell swings are fantastic. Uh, if you're doing the, the, the press exercise, so you're holding the kettlebells in front of your chest and you want to shoot them directly up into the air, you'll find that, um, well, let's go this way, you'll find that uh, doing that type of exercise, uh, you need to use your legs and the whole body stretch, so you stretch the joints open. Now there's three basic rules that, that I like people to follow. The first one is, vital breathe. Now as you vital breathe, you're relaxing and stretching the joints open to peak the vital energy. So awareness of vitality, stretching the joints. Number two, radiate that feeling of energy outwards and around you. Expand it out. And number three, keep an open mental state. Your mental body, your yi has to radiate several meters around you while you're doing the exercises. You can stretch the energy in the direction of the lift, or you can radiate spherically around your body, depending on what your need is. What, what I found is, if I can follow those three rules, joints open, energy radiant out, and the yi leading that energy outwards and keeping a big mental space, there's the muscles release, and the fascia activates, and you get a more connected body. So by, by training this, You'll find that uh, you'll find that uh, uh, you're essentially training the elasticity of the body, become stronger and stronger. And by keeping the mental body open, the feeling of energy open, the tendency is for the muscles not to contract. That your muscles will simply release, and the fascia will will develop. If you're uh, stimulating and challenging your balance, that forces it even more into a facial web connection framework. So there's a, a huge uh, benefit in that. So I suggest, with your weight training, just follow those basic rules and avoid any form of muscle contraction, but put all the load onto the facial web, relax, stretch the energy open, and uh, the rest takes care of itself. It's a relatively simple process once your awareness is inside of the mindset of how do you build an elastic web in your body. That biotensecurity web, just tune into it, open the three bodies, and you develop it. Nice and simple. Okay, we'll leave this one there, and uh, 
see you guys in the next video.